water. It's pretty good. I mean, it's like necessary for life and all, so it's got that going for it. Bodies of water are obviously an important inclusion in any map, but where do you put them and how do you make them look good? That's gonna be our focus here in part three of how to draw a fantasy map. All right, guys, so here we have it. We are going to be drawing our waterways, uh, mostly focusing on rivers, lakes, and also we'll be doing some work on our coastlines today to make them pretty. So to help us talk about some of the basics of where water tends to form and which ways it tends to move, I have this planning map that I made a while back for this map, and we'll just talk about a couple basic principles and guidelines. First off, you notice that I often have my rivers flowing from the mountains out toward the sea. So these right here are coming down and going into this lake here and then eventually out toward the sea. And we have three different branching tributaries there of this river or maybe two depending on how you want to look at it. So you don't have to have all your river starting in mountains, but you should probably remember gravity. Gravity will force water from high places down to lower places, and it will always take the path of least resistance. So in a way, when you are drawing your rivers, you are picking the low points or the path of least resistance on your map. Another important guideline is that rivers generally will not split, rather they will join. So there's a couple different ways you can look at maps and sometimes it can get a little confusing, but if you were to, for example, think that the water is flowing this way, you might say, well, the river is splitting. Or for that matter, if we do recognize that the river is flowing this way and we had another branching river right here, you might tend to think that, hey, this water is splitting here. But actually what's more likely to be happening there is that this water is flowing from a high place down here and joining with this river and then going that way. Now river bifurcation is a thing, so there are times when rivers do split, but it's gonna be fairly rare. A common time when you do see river split is in the case of deltas. So if we zoom in on our coast a little bit here, uh, we might find a case where a river actually goes like this and then like this and like this and we call this a delta. It looks like the river splitting, but what's actually happening is probably previously the coastline was right here, and what's happened over time is that the river has slowed down so that all the sediment and silt that is flowing down in the water does not have enough force to push it all the way out to sea, and so it's slowing down to the point where that sediment is just kind of being pushed out a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and it's forming these little kind of islands and it looks like the river is splitting. So deltas do occur in nature, they're not super common, but you might wanna include one or two of those in your world. All right, now that we have some of these considerations for rivers out of the way, let's get down to the paper and actually start drawing our bodies of water. But first, I'd like to tell you about my sponsor, World Anvil. Oh no. The map and wrap it in the house, y'all. Worldanvil.com. World Anvil, the best way to manage your stuff. For world builders, authors, or GMs, it's tough. Maps, notes, and timelines, races, and places, NPCs, and lore, that's a lot. Good gracious. Get organized now. This service is the best. World Anvil, try a free account and put it to the test. It looks nice, it's practical, it's all that you need. Start small and keep adding. That town is just the seed. Their service is great, it's user-friendly and sexy. Not sure about you, but my notes will never vex me. So get on World Anvil and join with the team. Come and light up the forge, because it's the world builder's dream. Yeah, light up the forge because it's the world builder's dream. Thanks to World Anvil for their support. Head over to worldanvil.com today and check them out. So a couple of rivers that I had drawn in here uh, started in this mountain range. And I'm just gonna be drawing normal lines. You could do your rivers if you want to uh, with two parallel lines or roughly parallel lines. Um, or, you know, kind of a mixture of that. But this map is a pretty small one, so I'm going to be sticking to just a single line for all my rivers. As far as I know, we'll see, uh, see what happens. So here's my first main river coming out of the mountains. And it's attaching to this lake that I've already drawn in here. Now, lakes are going to be points where there's some kind of basin. There's some kind of a low land where the water is flowing, flowing, and then it collects here. 
and then eventually it is going to probably drain out to sea again. So that's what I have here. A couple other branches of this river coming from the mountains and joining with this right here. And then also right here coming out of this wooded area, what will be eventually a forest on my map and joining with our river there. Similarly, I do have some uh, rivers coming out of these mountains and flowing through this area. I'm going to save some space for a tidal there and it's going to exit out to see here and then I've just kind of got this little inlet there. Another branch of this river flows from right there. And that's going to be good enough for that one. Over here, I did draw another lake. This is a basin where the, the mountain slopes down there and it's just kind of one of these alpine lakes where the water flows off the mountains, collects via various streams and, and maybe even rivers into this lake, which is kind of a basin there. And this lake is going to drain out to sea. So uh, let's start that process here. I'm just gonna freehand it. We'll see how this goes. So that is a pretty big river that um, you know carries all the way from these mountains across to the opposite coast. Okay, I like what we got so far. Now over on this continent, I'm going to have it overall really dry. I'm not gonna be doing much. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have a forest on this side. There are gonna be some trees. And I think we'll maybe do a little river. Um, just going out here and then down to there. Lastly, over here, I did have a lake in my notes, so let's just uh, put a lake. There we go, kind of a funky shape. And we'll have this one draining out here. All right, so we've got our rivers and lakes pretty well situated here. Um, let's start talking about how to make the coastlines look nice. One thing I really like to do is kind of darken the southern edge of the coastline, the bottom edge here. So for example, I'll just be going in here and whereas I will leave that line right there pretty thin, I will darken this one a little bit with my pen and just go ahead and thicken that line. Uh, it's just a stylistic choice. It kind of makes the uh, the landmass pop up a bit, uh, gives it almost a prismatic 3D look. And I'm using my trusty number two here, but often I do like to actually use my Papermate flare pen. Uh, I don't know why I've just gotten accustomed to using this, so I like the way they feel. It's not an art pen by any means, but it works quite well for me. And of course, you can do this with any pen, it doesn't matter. Just a reminder that if you are working in pen, it's a good idea to save some space for the places you might have settlements uh, labeled them. I will also note that I did a video on three different coastline styles, and I will put a link to that video up at the top if you want to check that one out. The next step in making our coastlines look really nice is to make a line all the way around the coastline. It's just a very thin line at an equal distance from the coastline, roughly, all the way around, even the islands. So I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit here. For this process, I am using a thinner line than I did for my coastlines. I do not wanna make it quite as thick and bold. I'm using a size one pen in this case, but any pen will do. Just make sure it's thinner than your actual coastline. All right, now the next step in the process is the truly time consuming part. And for this one, I'm actually gonna move to my thinnest pen and just see how that looks here. Uh, this is a 005. And um, 
what we're gonna be doing is we're essentially gonna be making little wave lines along the outside of each. We're gonna be going in and making this sort of thing. Little waves, little squiggly lines, and I think it looks nice if you kind of make them broken lines too. So we're just gonna be going in and doing this sort of thing. We wanna make them varying lengths, although uh, I have seen people do them all the same length and that can look good, it's just a different style. And we're just going in and we're doing these little squiggly lines, varying lengths, and some of them are broken lines. When you get to a, an area like this, you just gotta go in and do some lines going out there. So like um, another example would be down here. So if we have lines going out like this, and like this, then down here we just need to, we gotta do something down here. Can't just leave it. So we go like that. And then we eventually can attach it to that. And the same thing is true over here. Eventually we go up and we can attach them to that. And then between coastlines, <clears throat> you can just go like this and make sure they're mostly lining up. I feel like I need one more down here. So we'll just go in and do that. So this is a pretty uh, time consuming step. So, you know, put on some good music or a podcast, critical role or something and go nuts. Another strategy would to be make, another strategy would be to make these lines fairly straight actually. And I've definitely done that on maps and uh, it can look good as well. While we're rolling through some of this, I just wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons for their support of my channel. These people are a big reason I can dedicate so much time to doing what I do here on WASD 20, and you can join with them too and get some pretty cool rewards like weekly map drawing streams and other things. So go check it out at patreon.com slash WASD 20. All right, we have got the coastline pretty well finished here. So now we're just gonna do the lakes. What I'm gonna do for these is pretty similar to the coastlines. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fill these in here. So we'll just do some little wavy lines like that. And it doesn't take much there, and that's pretty good. This one right here, same thing. Try not to make any lines straight across. Now one other type of body of water uh, would be a swamp or wetland. And uh, I'm actually gonna save doing those until I do my episode on just unique terrain. We'll do swamps, we'll do deserts, maybe a couple other ge unique geographical features. Uh, but those do tend to form along rivers in general. Although it's totally possible just to have like a, a coastal swamp too. All right, I wanna thank you so much for joining me for this one, everybody. If you have any comments or questions, as always, I love to hear from you. Just leave them down below. If you're interested in sharing your maps with me and some other pretty cool people, come on over to the WASD20 Discord. The server actually just reached 1,000 users today, so that's really cool. And there's a map channel there, lots of great discussion about various RPG topics as well. I'd like to thank World Anvil once again for their support. And of course, Mapper the Rapper, or the Mappin' Rapper. All right, everybody, that's it. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.